Hey guys, sorry about that abrupt, abrupt cutoff. The program stopped recording for some reason. Um, so I'm just going to continue what off of what I was saying before. So because of this pre the presence of this methyl group, which is a donating an electron donating group, uh, and the fact that we have this anion, they're both pushing electrons in the same direction, right? They're both pushing them towards this area over here, okay? And that's essentially going to localize the electrons to one spot. But stability of the anion is determined by being able to spread out the electrons, okay? So because that methyl is now donating and so is that lone pair, it is going to be destabilizing this, uh, this anion compared to this structure over here. Hydrogens do not donate electrons, all right? And so the only donation of electrons is occurring from that, carbon, from that uh, negative charge on that carbon and uh, resonating through the carbonyl. And so, judging between this ketone group and the aldehyde on the right, the aldehyde is going to be more acidic because the conjugate base is more stable, okay? So, um, I'll just keep that in mind with methyl groups and uh, the idea of competing resonance that we covered before. So now we're going to move on to the last factor in ARIO, and this is going to be uh, orbitals, okay? So, I drew these three structures here. And we're going to be focusing on these carbon atoms. Okay. So if we look at the left-hand structure, we're going to determine that actually the hybridization for those three carbon atoms that I showed in all three of the structures. So if you want some practice with that, pause the video first and try it out for yourself. All right. And so if we look at the left, that carbon is bound to three hydrogens and another carbon. And so this is going to be sp3. The one in the middle is bound to two hydrogens and one carbon. It's got a double bond. It's going to be sp2. On the right, it's bound to one hydrogen and triple bonded to another carbon. So that's going to be sp hybridized. Okay. And so in ARIO, we want to uh, look at the, uh, the anion that's going to be formed when we depronate it, right, the conjugate base. So let's just draw that out. Let's go grab that hydrogen negative charge there uh, same for all those and draw the conjugate base so we're gonna have this structure here it's got the lone pair then we drew this one And here's our alkyne. All right. So now we have these three structures. So we have an sp3 hybridized carbanion, an sp2 hybridized carbanion, and an sp hybridized carbanion. So in ARIO, we first look at the atom. The negative charge is on the carbon, okay? And so we can't really, um, we can't look at them. And so when in ARIO, you have the atom and the resonance and the induction is the same. We need to be looking at the hybridization of the atoms, okay? And so, which one is going to be more acidic, sp3, sp2, or sp? Well, the main, uh, the, what we really need to look at is what's known as the S character of these compounds, all right? What percentage of the orbitals is an S orbital? So, if we look at the sp3, uh, we have three p orbitals and one s, total of four. And so the s is one out of those four. So our s character is 25%. Here in the sp2, we have three p, so we have two p orbitals and one s, total of three orbitals. s is one out of three. And so this is going to be uh, one third. 33%, yeah, you know, one third. And then S and P, uh, NSP hybridized, we have one S, one P, total of two, and S is one out of those two, so it's just going to be 50% S. All right, and so acidity is going to be increasing with, with more S character. So 
going from sp3 to sp2 to sp sp is going to be more acidic than sp2 and sp3 and sp2 will be more acidic than sp3 and why is that if you guys are wondering about the explanation the uh when we have s orbitals the electrons are held more are uh, held closer to the nucleus right the nucleus is composed of protons and neutrons and it gives and it's an overall positive charge and so those electrons in the s orbital they're negatively charged and they're attracted to that nucleus and therefore they're going to be held tighter to it and so because they're held tighter to it the electronegativity is going to be increasing remember how when we focus on the atom in ario looking at the period we focus on electronegativity so this is another this is a uh, way of looking at electronegativity but through orbitals and so the more s character we have the tighter those electrons are held to the nucleus and the more electronegative they will be okay so just to summarize sp due to more s character will be more acidic than the other two and sp2 will be more acidic than sp3 okay and so that's the it for ario but i'm just going to mention one quick thing that i realized i forgot in the last video about induction so we showed these three examples over here right i'm just going to clean this up a little bit so we showed those three examples uh this carboxylic acid on the left one where there's a chlorine fairly close to it and one on the right where the chlorine is far away okay but what about when we have different halogens so let's just draw this molecule here uh, I'll copy this one over okay so the difference between them is going to be the chlorine and the fluorine so when we're to, when you narrow your choices down to the induction factor, we induction we have to, to consider two things: where the chlorine is, and uh, sorry, not where the halogen is, and which halogen it is. All right. So the position is the first thing you need to look at. All right. If we have this structure here, uh, yeah. So we're going to be looking at this structure. And let's say that just because the chlorine is closer, the induction is extremely is much more powerful than this distance over here, no matter what halogen it is. So those chlorines, that chlorine pulls electron density towards itself, and that fluorine is going to be extremely weak. It's going to be barely able to do it just because it's too far away. So the first thing you want to look at is how close that chlorine will be to that negative charge. And uh, if I redraw it as the conjugate base, which I should have done in the first place, that's what we need to be focusing on. All right. All right. And so that chlorine is going to be uh, more inductive. But now if we have the position the same, but with a different halogen, you now just need to look at the electronegativity of that halogen. So an electronegativity increases going up the periodic table and to the right fluorine is higher up on the table than chlorine and so it's going to be more electronegative and therefore can pull electrons much stronger than that fluorine sorry than the chlorine it can therefore stabilize that conjugate base better than the chlorine and so because the conjugate base is stable our original acid which I erased before, so I'll just redraw it. Is going to be more stable, and so this one right here, more stable. All right, and so uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that in the last video, so I just wanted to mention it really quick over here. And that's it for this video. In the next one, we're going to be looking at uh, a type of question they love to ask on a test uh, concerning the most acidic hydrogen on one compound. All right. I'm not 100% certain that this question will come up in your test, so it would be one, so I would be ready for it, and make sure you understand next video and all the videos thus far. If something here didn't make sense, please feel free to email me. Uh, my email is you know on the review homepage, and also 
go to office hours for the TAs. They're there to help you guys. And I'll see you in the next video.